Hello students. Today we are going to complete the last part of uh, kinematic modeling. So, in this uh, today's class, we are going to discuss the algorithm for the closed form solution obtained for inverse kinematic modeling. We have already obtained a solution for the direct kinematic modeling in the previous lectures using a Denavit Hartenberg notation. And today we are going to use that part also in addition to a uh, one algorithm that is devised for the uh, for solving or to obtain a solution for an inverse kinematic problem. So let's start with that part, the last part of this, the kinematic modeling part. So in this case, we are we are as we already know that we are going to obtain a closed form solutions rather than uh, the numerical solution just because of the iterative nature of that numerical solution so it requires some highly computational power to solve that and you need uh, you it is very difficult to solve numer uh, we can say manually so we will obtain a closed form solution but the condition for obtaining the closed form solution we already know that the consecutive three axes should be intersect or parallel only then we can only obtain this closed form solution for a exact solution so now we are going to start uh, as we already know what is this transformation matrix we already know that how we will obtain this transformation matrix in every transformation matrix 0 to 1, 1 to 2 and 2 to 3 and so on we always have one variable variable can be a theta 1 or variable can be a d1 if it is a revolute type find, it will be Q1 will be some like theta1 and if it will be a uh, prismatic type joint then it will be some type it is a D1 or uh, displacement basically otherwise it will be a revolute so it will be angular. So now um, so from that this equation this matrix is, is representing the overall transformation matrix you obtained after solving this part once you get this then this will be the overall transformation matrix overall transformation matrix that is known to you now next it comes to this part this is the this is what called as the uh, configuration space or the matrix for a overall matrix we already have for the anti factor position and this is what we already know and this i want to know so this is how we are going to proceed further so in our case we have a six known six known six known out of six known we have a three rotations that is roll pitch and yaw so all these nine components are related to that rpy rotation pitch and yaw angle so that means there are only three independent constants we have from three by three matrix of this that is known to us and three from the displacement dx dy dy dz that is motion in x movement in y and motion in z so that means three from this and three from this we already know that is in total we have a six known parameters this is already constant scale factor and the perspective projection vector but this we want to know basically this matrix i want to know that will tell you the orientation and uh, joint parameters what should be the angular angle theta what should be the parameter d that you will obtain using these equation and this is this is what you will have that means if it is uh, if if we have uh, n links that means we have n unknowns so that means this 3 by 3 consists of uh, n vectors and this is a constant d matrix or it can be a variable if it is a prismatic joint so in total we have a 12 equations that means three rows and four column because these this row is a constant row so that means we have a total 12 equations and making use of 12 equation we want to know n unknowns with six known we already know so in the last class we have also seen that this uh, to have a solution this n should must be greater than or equal to 6 thus because this condition will be satisfied so this n unknowns now then calculated using making use of these 12 equations and 6 known quantities so there will be certain procedure we have to solve this that is for inverse kinematic modeling part now firstly 
so let's start with this so first part is firstly we have to see which which out of this matrix which which will which variable or which coefficient will have only one joint variable because r11 r12 r13 are the functions of uh, joint variables and what are that joint variables theta and d so this r1 r12 rij we can say in general we can say rij is nothing but a function of theta and d d is a displacement theta is a angular rotation so that means every equation consists of some variable parameter theta and d so firstly we have to identify out among all these 12 parameters or 12 equations or 12 elements which one having a single uh, single one joint variable that means either it will be having a theta 1 either it will be having a theta 2 or either it having a theta 3 or it either it having a d1 or d1 or d2 or d3 so among all 12 12 parameters we have to see first which is having uh, a single variable theta uh, joint variable basically now first once you identify it just you have to equate that to right hand side because this is already known to us now next next what you will find out is b part b point is okay uh, look for a set of equations which will be reduced to one equation let's say if i talk about r12 and it is a function of theta1 and theta2 and theta1 let's say you are already calculated using r13 let's say r13 is having is is a function of only theta1 and from the first step a you will have calculated that that uh, r13 is equal to ax and you will get the value of theta1 let's say now let's say theta1 uh, net r12 is a function of theta2 and theta1 so that means theta1 you already know so that means in the b point you will use r12 as a next step to determine the value of theta2 so theta1 you have already determined using r13 now you will get the theta theta 2 from this equation so this is a b step so that means you have to identify that equations which are reduced which can be reduced to only one equation in one joint variable uh, by the application of all the algebraic and trigonometric identities now three and the very crucial and the very interesting fact about this is that uh, arc tangent function arc tangent function means inverse tan inverse so we already seen that cosine inverse sine inverse so instead of using the sin inverse cosine inverse we are going to use tangent inverse but in that also we are going to use arc tangent 2 inverse this a tan 2 is a very important function having special features having special type of uh, characteristics among all the harmonic functions we have so um, without using any uh, instead of using this arc sin arc arc means inverse so the tan means cosine inverse instead of using cosine inverse sin inverse or tangent inverse we are going to use a tan 2 so because it is have it is a two argument function that returns the accurate angle of the range minus pi to pi this arc sin and sin and cosine will don't uh, will not tell you regarding the orientation basically which which quadrant the uh, the point will lie or we, what is a quadrant but uh, even though tan uh, only tan inverse can uh, is not able to find out that answer so we have to use tan 2 inverse to get the accurate range of minus pi to pi by examining the, because it can examine both the way, both the uh, direction as well as magnitude of y and x so and detecting whether either y x or y 0 so i mean i can simply explain this by taking one example So this is arc tan. Let's say I have compared. I have for the comparison to show how it is differs. Let's say I have tan inverse and I have a tan inverse two. Now if I compare both the cases, what I will have is let's say I have a four quadrants one two three four and the let the point is one comma one. That will be I'm sure that x is minus one comma one, x is minus one comma minus one and one comma minus two. That is a four quadrant. when i solve it for theta that is tan inverse my that is tan inverse 1 that is we will get up to 0.79 in radians similarly for the third quadrant you will get the same that means when i get when i solve the answer for 1, 1 and when i solve the answer for minus 1, minus 1 i will get the same same result that means it is very difficult to identify where the final configuration will lie or what is a theta basically theta theta will tell you that final value is 0.79 but it it should not be like that because it is very difficult to identify 
because uh, because you just you see the result 0.79 and 0.79 and you can you can't identify in which quadrant the point will lies so that means similarly for if i talk about -1 and 1 you get the same result that means for first and the fourth quadrant you will get third quadrant you get the same result and second and the fourth quadrant you get the same results in other words we can say that using this tan inverse uh, we can't we are not able to find out in which quadrant the point will lie then it comes to the a arc tan 2 and this will so re resolve this problem because it takes the value in terms of y comma x it simply takes the value y by x simply it tan inverse y by x so it just take the argument but it takes the value as a arg as a, a y and x independently that means if theta is 1 comma 1 then simply you will get the same answer same answer 1 comma 1 or 1 comma 1 but when i talk about minus 1 comma 1 that is minus 0.7 in this case it will be 2.36 so that means there will be some relation of or some expression that should be included in a arc tan 2 so it is simpler to calculate this arc tan 2 so uh, so that means when i move when i have a positive value that means it is the anti clockwise rotation and you can identify that the quadrant in which it lies basically 0 to 90 or 92 0 to 90 or 90 to 180 because 2.36 is approximately 135 degree and it is approximately 45 degree so that means you can simply identify that if i well the my value is 2.36 because if my value if i enter the value minus 1 comma 1 in simple tan inverse i will get the minus 0 0.79 so I, it is very difficult to identify in which quadrant it lies because minus 0 0.79 we can also obtain in fourth quadrant so it is very difficult to identify it so but in our case in this arc tan 2 case when i enter the minus 1 comma 1 value i will get the value 2.36 and from this i can simply assign that if i convert into the angle that is it becomes 135 degree that means it lies in the second quadrant but in from this i can't identify whether it lies in second or the fourth quadrant so this is the advantage of using arc tan function similarly when i move anti clockwise it become positive and when i become clockwise it become negative so similar simply if i get the value minus 0.79 that means the angle is clockwise otherwise it is anti clockwise the values are same change by just um, um, uh, just a simple uh, uh, direction plus and minus but but the values are same so that means uh, that means if it is positive that means it is anti clockwise if it is negative it is clockwise similarly if i get point minus 0.36 that means it is clockwise 135 degree this this angle will be the 135 degree so that means arc tan 2 will be able to identify the quadrant in addition to the angle where it lies this is the advantage of using arc tan 2 in this inverse kinematic problem so but how to calculate this value how to calculate this theta in terms of arc tan 2 we have certain relation for this that is r tan 2 is equal to r tan y by x if x is greater than 0 that means when the point lies on right hand side of this it will always be same as the tan theta as you can see 0 0.79 0 0.79 0 0.79 minus 1 so when it when we talk about the positive x axis the formula for that will be same you can simply calculate by using the using your scientific calculators but when i talk about the y value if it is uh, if x is less than 0 then it will be have something different if x is less than 0 and y is positive that means you have to add pi to it and if x is negative and y is also negative you have to subtract pi to it and that is what is the difference between the arc tan and the arc tan 2 function so that means it is very simple to identify in which quadrant it lies and that's what we want in our case also in robotic case where, where the joint will rotate clockwise or anti-clockwise so it depends upon this angle theta 1 theta 2 theta 3 so, and this can only be obtained using this arc tan 2 function so that is the advantage of using this arc tan 2 function so next point is the uh, solutions in terms of element or position vector component of t0 are more efficient than those in terms of element of rotation matrix because this is this simply contains displacements is d1 d2 and d3 and so on so it is these expressions are very simple so among these 12 equations firstly you should go with the last three elements last uh, last column elements rather than going with the 3 by 3 elements uh, for the for equality you first first try for this element this will be the this will give you the some simpler result and simply to simple to solve this 
the equations so this is the a part b part c part d part and this is arc ten and ten function now the la uh, last point is a very important point that is uh, how we are going to use the inverse kinematic model so inverse kinematic model how to implement the inverse kinematic model once you simply once you get all the simple result let's say you have find out uh, all the theta uh, let's say up to uh, certain limit you can find out theta 1 theta 2 theta 3 now what to go further how to go further you can simply find out one angle but uh, sometimes it is very difficult to find one more than one angle let's say you can only find theta 1 but it is very difficult to find theta 2 or theta 3 with the same procedure which we have discussed so far in a b c and d points so now it comes the inverse kinematic model how you can solve it through inverse kinematic approach so what what you will do is because uh, you can see that when I talk about 0 to 1 we have one transformation matrix and it, it, it only have theta 1 it only have theta 2 it only have theta 3 term and so on so that means every transformation matrix consists of a one type one one uh, we can say joint variable so that means if I sh if I know let's say uh, I have a three links 0 to 1 1 to 2 and 2 to 3 so if I know this is my known part this is one type of what I already know so just what I will do is I already calculated let's say theta 1 and I want to know what is theta 2 so what I will do I will shift this part to this part in order to obtain the right hand side this this side is a function of now theta 1 and theta 2 once I shifted this 2 to 3 to left hand side let's say then what I will have is on the right hand side on this side I only have a equations which are in terms of theta 1 and theta 2 and then it is very simpler to solve for theta 2 because theta 1 we already calculated let's say theta 1 we already calculated and theta 3 I have already shifted now I will have one some equations which only have theta 1 and theta 2 on the right hand side theta 1 we already know and theta 2 you now you can obtain by equating the terms again with the constant terms on the left hand side and then and then, then go on go, go further let's say you also you can also go for it let's say you shift this t1 to 2 from left hand side and you get the value of theta 3 now let that means if you shift this 1 to 2 1 t2 to, to left hand side now you are left with only 0 to 1 and 2 to 3 that means your right hand side will be in terms of theta 1 and theta 3 and then you will get equations of in terms of theta 1 theta 3 and solve for it you get the theta 3 similarly you can obtain as many as uh, angles you want uh, just by uh, using this inverse phenomena so what you will get this part well, after pre-multiplying it by by let's say t 2 to 3 or 1 to 2 you get this part so this is called as the inverse transformation approach and that is post multiplying is uh, uh, that is a post multiplying you multiply it uh, by some approach so this is what we uh, what you have to follow the guidelines to solve this uh, solution of inverse kinematic problem so today we are going to finish up to this part the algorithm part so please remember these algorithm to solve. So in the next class we are going to solve one numerical on this. Uh, thank you for today.